Hello there, YouTube. And hello there, Stiggy. Um, just before we start, this isn't me getting involved in the drama. This is just me uh, commenting on something that uh, you uh, said in your interview with Brett Keane that particularly resonated with me because of the fact that um, I studied archaeology for years. Now, I know you like proof of these things, so I happen to have it with me. Uh, here you go. And if you can see that, sorry, my light is... Uh, that's my uh, Bachelor of Arts in Classical and Archaeological Studies. And my Master of Arts light in archaeology of the trans manch now this is uh, what's this got to do with anything um basically when we're talking about archaeology of any particular kind of uh, religious story or um, legend or i believe the correct term for everything now is mythology which i don't agree with personally because mythology was a word invented by early sort of Christian scholars to sort of dismiss the old pagan ones. So by calling something Christian mythology, you're um, deliberately saying it to antagonise Christians. As far as I'm concerned, you're you're um, you're using their own word against them, which I don't think is on. Uh, so I'll just say stories for the purposes of this. But when you're looking into the historical reality of a lot of stories in the Bible, in um, Jewish scripture and Christian scripture, things get weird really quickly. And I mean really weird. I was studying uh, under a guy called Dr. Stephen Penfold. He's a part-time um, professor at the university and he's only part-time because he spends most of his time researching and writing up his books and things and he's a, he's a very very clever man and a very sarcastic man and he was teaching us a module on the supposed history of the Atlantis story and he was um, going through all the various contradictions and the fact that we we still he said uh, after this course I guarantee you at least once every five years some idiot would have claimed to have discovered Atlantis the simple reason is uh, the descriptions we have in the original uh, documents mentioning it like the Timaeus and Critias etc etc they're all um, very vague. Beyond the pir Pillars of Heracles could literally be anywhere on the planet. Um, I believe uh, th this feature said, it said, so it could be, there could be the Atlanteans were the Minoans. It could be that the Atlanteans were in the middle of the Atlantic. It could be that um, they were in Antarctica, which is one theory I find really unbelievable. Aliens versus Predator, I have no problem with. Atlantis and Antarctica, I do. <laughs> yeah, you can use that quote. Um, <laughs> the guy, um, the guy was was a very interesting teacher, and he taught us a lot about how, when you're looking at stories, even completely fictional stories, and you look into their background more, and the the, the reality that inspires the fiction is often. Uh, or, or even it's, uh, the reality that is recorded by history is um, a lot sort of less weird than what actually happened. And with the Bible, biblical, he actually he'd done some biblical archaeology in his past, and he um, this guy who um, in a lecture said that uh, he bought Aliens versus Predator. Um, actually called biblical archaeologists a bunch of weirdos and there is a good reason for this um, that is because um, well they are um, very little of what we uh, um, very 
biblical archaeologists vary. We, we've, we, we, we've got a fair... Apart from those who have just been utterly bought by the creationist lobby, like Ian Juby, who isn't really an archaeologist, he's a ge ge geologist, but he, he's used both both that, both that titles, which is um, very misleading. But then again, the fact that he lied for seven years to get his PhD in geology um, is pretty annoying anyway. Uh, I would check check out Wildwood Clare for uh, more information on that. It, he is he is quite a character. Um, but anyway, that's, that's going off subject and it's not really relevant to you because you don't really accept creation. But when it comes to um, history of the church, history of Christianity, it gets strange as it goes along. I mean, the, the, uh, you mentioned the Ark of the Covenant uh, which is very famous, obviously, because of the Indiana Jones clip, um, film involving it, uh, among other things. It's a, it's a legend that's been re, redone and re-looked into time and time again. Or I shouldn't really say legend, but... But um, recently a chap, uh, archaeologist and uh, anthropologist, I think he was British, uh, or was he Hungarian, I can't remember, he decided to, well, he decided to make it his sort of main objective was find the Ark. And what the first thing that a lot of these biblical archaeologists who are going out and look, looking for things, one of the first things they do is they kind of ignore biblical descriptions. Uh, which may sound odd, but um, when it comes to sort of literal descriptions and technical details in the Bible, they... Uh, you get the feeling they were written in purely to sort of give some credibility where they um, were straining it, which... and they, they completely fail to do so. The Noah's Ark's dimensions are a classic example of that, because we've worked out the boat can't actually float if it's built with the technology they had at the time. Uh, it was an iron boat, and might make sense, but how the fuck is supposed to build an iron boat in the Bronze Age is another uh, um, question entirely. Um, anyhow, the uh, yeah, when when you have exact, um, very sort of exact descriptions, they tend to get ignored, and that's this is one of the first things he did, and he did a lot of tracking down and track and um, looking through digging up um, a lot of the sort of old Babylonian civilization, which is under Iran, Iraq, and Syria at the moment, so it wasn't exactly the easiest tasks. And eventually he was tracking down these various groups and offshoots of the original tribes of Israel, uh, because there are currently about... there's two different groups um, claiming to be the 13th tribe, one in India, and one in uh, just south of Zimbabwe, and they both claim to be the thirteenth tribe. Um, and it could be that they both are, but it was the one in one to the south of Zimbabwe that um, who are in exile because of Mugabe not liking them, that uh, were came up with the best uh, explanation he came for, um, he, that fitted with what he dug up on what he'd researched in, in various documentations. And we ended up with not so much an arc as a drum. Because um, when you talk about biblical descriptions of the arc's use in battle, it seems very much like the old um, the way they use musical instruments to coordinate the troops. And the more he looked into it and looked into it, he said, oh, this is, this is clearly some kind of big musical instrument. And he found this huge drum in an archive in Zimbabwe, which he had to break into the country to get to, which was a bit hairy, as you can imagine. Um, and, uh, yeah, he found it. Uh, from his uh, research, it looks like we have the Ark of the Covenant. It's a big drum in Zimbabwe. Oh, well, that's really my point. Um, when we're talking about biblical archaeology, exact descriptions 
tend to get left behind because of the fact that um, their exactness may well be to sort of say this just just a way of reinforcing to sort of old believers this is true which is silly because there's, we know there's there's truth in all these stories the flood myth going back to the flood myth uh oh, sorry, flood story there are flood stories in every culture in that area and there's a good reason for that it's because there was a bloody grid flood in that area um i don't know if you know there's a there's a little strip of strip of land that got sort of goes halfway into it's around Turkey. And it goes it goes up and it seems to continue just then it goes out into the Red Sea. Under that there is a strip of submerged land with whole cities on it. Because the formation of the Red Sea was a direct result of a huge flood that coincides with what we know from uh, the Bible, what we know from uh, Sumerian, Mesopotamian, all sorts of other groups, and they've all got their own um, strange story behind it. And some of them do involve uh, blokes um, taking animals on boats, having been worn by a deity. The story in the Bible is pretty much word for word taken, I believe, from Tammuz. Tammuz was a Babylonian um, deity. And I think the Babylonian deities come off as massive assholes because their reason for wiping out humanity was not its sinfulness, but the fact they were making too much noise. Yes, seriously. Um, but Tammuz didn't like this, so he, um, he warned a guy ahead of time to pack up his family and pack up the animals. And then, of course, the other gods found out and condemned Tammuz to die. And he was reborn as a golem. And that's where the go and again, that got mixed in with the sort of the golem legends that are uh, very popular amongst Jewish communities. Um, so, yeah. This work, there is a lot more to this work. And you're, you're right to say things like evolution don't necessarily challenge the Bible because it's damn right they don't. I know for a fact because I've stuck my trowel in things that are over 5,000 years old. Um, but uh, yes, it's um, it's the, the world's a lot weirder place than even the most outlandish of stories from the past could uh, possibly uh, explain. And um, when it comes to sort of interpreting them in the modern day, we know we've got it a lot. We've got a lot of it wrong. Um, another thing that I was going to talk about in particular was um, various Christian attitudes to homosexuality. This is a new thing, believe it or not. Well, new in terms of English new, which is about 500 years, which is actually older than the United States. So um, bear with me here. At the Reformation, um, the re part of the, the Reformation was the beginning of the Protestant split from the Catholics, and one of the key problems that the, the Reformation leader Martin Luther had was that the Catholic Church was sanctioning gay marriage. This um, actually is that they they had to an extent a kind of a condemnation of it, but. In most Catholic countries, including Britain, um, they had a difference between a moral offence and a criminal offence. Moral offence was dealt with, any sort of punishment was normally a fine, it was dealt with by the church. A criminal offence was dealt with by the civil courts. Uh, sorry, criminal courts. Um, and it was, uh, there was this division of church and say, I've, I've got a video on that actually. And, um, when it comes to legalizing gay marriage, you have this um, precedent that the Catholic Church set, which was essentially they said, yes, you can get married if you can get married in our church, providing you pay us a little extra fee on top. Now, Luther didn't like the fact that the money, uh, I think Luther's main problem was the money, I think. But Luther 
great guy for reforming the church, bad guy for being the father of modern anti-Semitism and modern homophobia. Um, he was, really. He, he, there is very little to redeem Martin Luther when it comes to those issues. Um, but, um, yeah, he, um, he has a lot to answer for. But um, we've had uh, so several sort of splits since then. We had in England we had the Buggery Act uh, brought in by Lutheran Thomas Cromwell, and uh, a few, uh, and we've been having problems ever since, um, particularly as denominations like the Quakers and the Unitarians are um, very sort of liberal in their agenda compared with. Um, a rather sort of centrist Church of England, a very conservative Catholic Church, um, and uh, some very conservative Protestant denominations of various kinds, um, some of which would go off to found the United States. Um, and contrary to the myths you may have been taught, uh, the reason the Pilgrim Fathers went to the United States was not to flee religious persecution, it was to engage in it. Um, James I had passed a law saying you cannot lynch Quakers. Um, and they didn't like that. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, anyhow... I hope you enjoyed this. Do have a look at my channel. Um, I do hope I haven't um, pissed you off in any way, but that's just my archaeological um, perspective on things. Uh, as for my own uh, religious perspective, I'm a liberalish Church of England guy, so yeah, it's it's an interesting uh, topic to look at, and hope I've uh, hope I've been some help.